let's uh, first present myself. Um, I am Vic Opin, sales manager of uh, Xenix. And I would like to present to you today um, some view about our new line of products, why we have designed it. Uh, it's based on a new concept for infrared market. And uh, I would like to go through the, let's say, some points about the design of this product and also present to you some applications. So first I will start with some um, uh, information about my company in very short, because you can always come to us and uh, ask for more information if you want. I will explain what is the, the background of the new architecture of our cameras, uh, why we have done that, what is the component of it. Uh, then I will have uh, some uh, product presentations and uh, applications overview. So Xenix in short, we are an infrared company. We are designing, manufacturing, and uh, sensors for infrared, but also cameras. Uh, we are a small company, but the goal of our company is really to have a breakthrough uh, in technology. We are a high-tech company. Um, we, have, uh, we are developing, of course, our own sensors. What that means, we are um, uh, knowing uh, all the parts concerning this technology. We try to, to uh, go on a continuous innovation, so that means we are now looking for sensors that we will use in five to ten years. Um, following, of course, the requirement of the future market for infrared, for example, for the car and automotive industry. Uh, we are, of course, because we are a small company, we are applications and market driven. We cannot cover all the applications in infrared. For example, we will never go to the low end market with handheld ca cameras. It's not the purpose of the company. We are just targeting the high end or the high technology applications. What is important also for us is to be flexible. So that means we try to answer to all the needs of our customers, uh, sometimes doing uh, custom products. Uh, just to give you an idea, uh, last year we made 25% uh, of custom sensors and custom cameras for cu customers. So it was one quart of our turnover last year. What is the difference between ourselves and uh, our competitors, mainly from US or from Japan? We are very flexible. So that means we try to answer to the, to the request of the customers, but also to propose to the market um, flexible solutions, so we do, you don't have to stick to a specific uh, cameras or a detector that will not suit your needs. We are poised from Europe. It's very important for the infrared market because you probably know it is dual, uh, dual use um, for the export license. So that means uh, we can sell our products to military market. So that means uh, a lot of uh, suppliers of infrared cameras are submitted to ITAR restrictions, so that means they cannot export to some countries. It is not the case for European companies, so that means we can do what we want where we want in the world. Of course, there are some blacklisted countries like uh, Afghanistan or uh, North Korea, we cannot sell there, but for the rest of the world, we can do it. Uh, last important point also, all the design of our sensors, readout, electronic and so on is done in-house. And very important for us, we try to provide a good service to our customers. What are the comp competences of the company? We are first a detector company, so we are designing our own sensors and manufacturing them. We are also a readout uh, electronic designer, so we do the readout for our own sensors, but also for uh, some of our competitors. We design our own electronics, so we have uh, some uh, high knowledge in FPGA and DSP programming. We design our own mechanics also, including the movement, movement inside some uh, cameras. We have uh, some processing images on board, but also for the user interface. And everything is designed in Xenix. We have uh, three kinds of products, or three levels of products. We have let's say, off-the-shelf products, which are systems like this one, or cameras. So this one is a gimbal for an helicopter, for example. We can provide this kind of solutions. We have also OEM products, which is mostly the cores. So like this one, which is a, a shortwave core, cooled engine. We supply also custom detectors and custom readout, or custom uh, devices, so that means the combine, combination of a readout and the packaging and the sensor. And finally, 
we are also uh, doing custom design. It can be a detector. Uh, for example, if you dream to have a detector of 64 times uh, 70 77 lines, OK, we can do it. It's not a problem. Uh, we can have that cooled and uncooled. And we are covering uh, the entire market of infrared. So that means we started first with the scientific market, so mainly R&D and universities. Uh, we are here because we are also industrial supplier for system integrators, but also for the people who are doing online uh, process. Big market for us now is also security and homeland security and military applications. And finally, we have, uh, let's say, a team working only on modules and components and uh, custom engineering. To give you some proportions, uh, scientific is uh, one quarter of our revenue, industrial uh, is uh, one quarter, security one quarter, and this one one quarter. So it's, uh, we are balanced on all the markets. We have a complete range of products. It's also unique in Europe uh, because we are the only company in Europe that can supply all kinds of uh, infrared cameras from the short wave to the very long wave, cooled and uncooled. So we have a complete range for scientific and uh, industrial cameras, but also for security cameras. So here you have, uh, for example, a scientific uh, short wave. Uh, the Shita CL is scientific and also industrial. Onka is mainly uh, for the long wave, so the thermal imaging, and also mid-wave imaging. Uh, it's a platform for the scientific market. Then we have a Gobi Raven for the industrial market, the cores for the system integrators, and then we have systems for the security market. So this was short words about the company. I can tell you more if you want. We can discuss that after the, this uh, presentation if you want. So the goal of this presentation was mainly to show you our new design. Um, probably you will say, yes, uh, Xenix is coming for something that uh, you have already seen uh, or for uh, standard cameras, CMOS cameras or CCD cameras. But you have to know that this type of architecture is really new for the infrared world. Uh, nobody up to now has done that in that way. Um, so this is a new approach. In the past, the cameras for infrared were bulky, expensive, not easy to use, uh, not simple interface, not simple for programming. Uh, we have really uh, worked on a flat table, a new table, and we have new, done a new design for it. So the, the idea was first to focus on the machine vision market, to have a, a line of small, compact uh, cameras uh, based on modular design, okay? and to cover the range of uncooled cameras. So that means the short wave, in gas, area scan, and long, uh, uh, line scan, and also for the long wave thermal imagers. Why to do that? First, because of a new generation of sensors on our side, but also on uh, some uh, suppliers, uh, manufacturers in the world. They try to, they start now to reduce the size of the sensors. They are much more compact than they were before. Uh, now, for example, if you take a, a bolometer with a PAL or NTSC resolution, in the past it was uh, one inch and a half or two inch than the diagonal. Now we go to less than one inch. Um, we have also a more dynamic, less noise on those sensors. Um, and this means that we can do something much more performant on, on the level of the sensors. We want it to be modular, so that means we have uh, developed three platforms, one for the video output, one for the sensors, and one for the, uh, the, the processing. And we will combine both, uh, all, all, all those, sorry. Last criteria that we want to have is to achieve a very compact, as much as possible. We have some limitation due to the size of the sensors. So we cannot go lower than the physical size that we have now, which is, in fact, this size here. So below that, we cannot go now. Um, then uh, the easiness of manufacturing. The infrared market now is going, moving to high volume, especially for the short wave uh, so, and the long wave. So that means we have to go 
with a design that allow us to produce uh, really in mass. This is something that uh, was not able, uh, possible in the past. And the last point is to have also the, um, let's say, the possibility to go down in price and to offer cameras in larger volume but also in lower price. I will start with the different uh, level on the design. The first one is a sensor board. So you have here some examples of sensor boards. Um, what is that? In fact, we have to, to adapt the sensors to uh, support that will transfer the signal from the, from the sensors. So uh, this, this board, in fact, is doing two things. It is uh, providing all the electrical, uh, electronic signal necessary to work uh, with the sensors. So, of course, power supply, but also all the controls on the sensors. And on the back side, on the other way, to collect all the signal coming from, uh, from the, the sensors and the readout. And you have here an example of uh, a 2D array with a cooled, so a tech cooled for the shortwave, a line array here, and a barometer, so a, uh, something for thermography. The second step, so behind the, the, processor, the, um, uh, the sensor board, we have a processing board. What is that? In fact, we, uh, you need to process the, the, the digital signal coming from the, from the, the readout. You have to, to uh, collect and to, uh, to save on this board also the data or the information coming from the user, from the PC. Uh, you have also to implement some calibration. Every sensor on infrared has to be calibrated. Um, this is due to the manufacturing process. We cannot get uh, uniform pixels on all uh, the surface. So that means every pixel has to be calibrated in terms of sensitivity. So this is what we call the non-uniformity correction. On this board also, we, co we control the cooling system, if there is one, uh, the shutter process to zero the sensor sometimes. Uh, if we have to do thermography, so uh, uh, process uh, calibrated images with, uh, for temperature, we have to do that also on the board. And finally, this board is formatting the image in order to provide a signal for or information to the outside world. And last but not least, we have the interface board. Uh, this one, in fact, gets the information from the FPGA board. Uh, it's also transferring the, the user settings from the, from, the supply, from the customer or the users to the FPGA. Okay. It's going through a, a serial interface. It's also uh, uh, managing the trigger signal. So if you have to trigger in or out, it's managing that. Uh, it will also generate all the power supply for the, for the camera. And on the other side, it will give all the output uh, available. So we provide now a camera link, Gigi, analog, of course, Coax Express, and the final output is the, the trigger. So it's done in that way. So you see three examples here. You have the a standard analog board, uh, a camera link board, and a Gigi. Uh, this is one is a little specific because we have power over Gigi on our uh, cameras. So that means we need two boards, one to manage the, pros the power supply and the other one for really for the Gigi vision or for the, the, the Gigi interface. Uh, if you, we have also now uh, Coax Express and it's looking very close to this one. Then you have the final assembly, which is again something like that. So all the components are plugged into each other. So we make uh, one sensor with one FPGA and one uh, output board. Um, and you, we can combine the configuration as we want. So if you go on our website, on, uh, sorry, on our booth, you will see all the possibilities. We have made a matrix with all the possibilities available with sensors, uh, output boards. And this is, in fact, um, let's say a basic version. It's what we call the no-AM version. Most of the customers will not use that because they have to make themselves a mechanical interface for the optics and also another output for the, for the communication. So what, what we provide normally for the machine vision industry, it is this kind of thing. So inside is this uh, assembly. We put... Uh, 
a housing outside. This one is a specific one because it has to be also uh, dissipating some heat. Uh, and we put also, you see this black pl plate is the interface for the lens. Okay, so you have, uh, after, with that, a very compact camera uh, ready to use. So why to do that also? The goal at the end for you is to uh, have something very um, uh, flexible. So because we use the same interface, the same mechanics, it's easy to swap from one model to another model in terms of mechanics. In terms of API, also, because we are using YMFBGA, we have using also one communication protocol between the camera and, uh, and uh, the, the software. So that means you can really switch from one kind of camera to another one in an easy way. So we provide a SDK to do that, and we have also an, uh, an API to test the camera to make the proof of concept. It's called a Xenet. Uh, for the camera link and also for the Coax Express, we will support some frame grabbers. We now support national instruments and URSS, but in the future we can support much more than that. And we have also done the work to be compatible with, uh, the, let's say, the largest uh, software uh, suppliers like MVTech, Alcon, the Vision Pro from Cognex, uh, the CVB from Stemmer. And last but not least, and it's also unique with Clinix, uh, we provide a very large choice of uh, lenses. We have a standard list of lenses, but we work also with uh, custom lenses if needed, or something supplied by, let's say, a, a supply of lenses that you, you, you know yourself. So this is an overview of the design of the product. Uh, I will now describe, let's say, three uh, family of products. The first one is the brand new one. It is the, we have, sorry, we have a, a line for short wave. So there we have four cameras or four models. We have the long wave with a GoB640 and 384, so two resolutions. And those ones are combined with those interface for the moment. The first one is the Bobcat 640. It is the smallest available sphere camera uh, on the world. Uh, it's uh, available now with Gigi, Cameraling, and Coax Express. You see the answer curve of this camera, so it's 0.9 to 1.7 micron. We have a Visney option also. So as the substrate of this uh, sensor is, um, INGAS sensor is a CMOS, what we do, we reduce the thickness of the INGAS layer in order to increase the sensitivity on the CMOS side. So that means we uh, have more light coming on the sensor, so more sensitivity, but we lose a little in the sensitivity in the short wave. Of course, it doesn't have the, sensor, the answer of a CMOS sensor, because you see on point 0.5 we have close to nothing. All the cameras from uh, Xenix on this uh, range are 14-bit. So that means we, put, uh, we provide 14-bit information. Um, this camera is T cooled, and we reach a, a frame rate of 100 frames per second. Uh, it was always possible to have uh, windows of interest on these uh, cameras, and uh, we decided to have a standard C mount for most uh, for this one, uh, because uh, for the short wave people can use uh, standard lenses for visible range. Um, what is important for this one? It is compliant with most of the software using uh, supporting Genicam and Gigi Vision. We are also supplying power over Ethernet. I said already easy to export, so if you integrate this in the machine, you don't, you don't have to apply for export license for it because the, 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 the camera is in itself, uh, let's say, uh, accepted. Uh, we have some onboard image processing. We do uh, image correction, we do auto gain, we do uh, lookup tables. Uh, you, d you can uh, do some. Uh, uh, overlay and these kind of things. Then, important also, we have two operation modes. We have uh, RTR and IWR for the reading. And finally, I didn't mention that up to now, the new cores are using industrial components. So that means they can operate from minus 30 to plus 70 degrees C. So if you are using this kind of camera in a harsh environment uh, or very cold environment, uh, it's still working. The, the components are designed for that. 
so that means if you are going, most of the cameras are certified up to 50 degrees C. And uh, I know that most of them are not working correctly between 40 and 50. This is not the case for us because our components are certified up to 70 degrees C. Um, I would like to give you some examples of applications, typical applications of this camera. Uh, one very large market for us is the solar cell inspection. Uh, of course, it's mainly in Asia where we, we have the customers for that, but there are some system integrators in Europe. Because the short wave is going through the silicon, you can do uh, silicon wafers inspection, you can do uh, uh, silicon ingot inspection, um, etc., etc. Everything related to the silicium is uh, done, um, do, um, done with uh, this kind of camera. Another application is the food or agriculture. Uh, it's a UAV applications. So here what you see in uh, yellow, it is a uh, uh, field that are more with more water than the other one. So you have here much more moisture on this one than the blue one. Um, this one is an inspection of uh, pharmaceutical pills. So we go below the coating of the, of the pill to see what's, what is happening inside, to see the uniformity of the, 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 the structure. Another um, model that we have introduced here is uh, the line scan cameras. This is quite unique product. Uh, we have only one competitor in the world for this kind of camera. Uh, this is um, providing three resolutions, one, one, 512, 1K and 2K. It can, seem, it can be seen perhaps uh, very low compared to the very large uh, line scan sensor that you know for machine vision. But for really for, uh, for shortwave, it's a performance to reach uh, 2K. Um, so, and those sensors have uh, a size of one inch maximum. So you can use standard uh, C-mount uh, C lenses. Those, design, those cameras are designed for spectral measurements, so that, that means they are going at very high frame rate. So we are going to 40 kilohertz for the 512 and the 1K, and we go to 10 kilohertz for the 2K. So it's very, very fast. It is uncooled, so very easy to use, and it, it gives an output of 14 bit. Again, like the previous one, easy to export, power of a gigi, ITR and IWR, and industrial components. Another thing that you can do also is uh, waste sorting. Uh, you have a, uh, a web with a lot of plastics here, and depending on the, 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 the response in short wave, you can dis decide if it's a PP, a PATP, or whatever, and make a selection on the, on the, on the waste. Another application is also because the previous one is using a system using a spectrometer or spe uh, hyperspectral measurement, so that means quite sophisticated optics. You can also, if you want to select specific material, you can use a filter. So in front of the sensor, you place a bandpass filter, and you can make selection of uh, specific materials. Another big market also for us, it's uh, the, uh, the, um, the medical market. One large is the ophthalmology. With uh, a short wave, you can go through the, the cornea and you can look at the defects, for example, here on the iris, or even deeper in the material. Another application, it is uh, skin control. With a line scan, you can go through the skin and detect, for example, melanomas and detect some cell, can uh, cell ca uh, of cancers. Uh, cardiology, there are some people who are using endoscopes and inside the, they go inside the veins and they can detect some defects on the veins. For example, here, you can see the structure of the vein. Uh, yes, cardiology, you can go inside the heart, for example, here. Uh, dentistry, here it's a comparison of uh, three images. You have, uh, you have the, the classical X-ray. Here it's a sphere imaging, it's a visible imaging. In the sphere, you can see this defect inside the, the, the tooth. Then finally, the last product that we have is a thermal uh, imager. 
uh, mainly for machine, machine vision, we can do two things. Really, uh, let's say, spectral measurements again, or temperature measurement on this one. We are using a different kind of sensor. They are working from 8 to 14 microns. Uh, with a picture 17 microns, so that means we can use very compact lenses. It's an A2D converter of 16 bit, going up to 15 frames per second, so it's a PAL, let's say, uh, uh, video rate, and you can al do also do a windowing on this one. Um, yes, typically on this camera, we reach uh, 50 millikelvin. Uh, NETD, so it is uh, the temperature resolution that you can re achieve on this one. And this camera, in fact, can be calibrated from uh, minus 20 to 2,000 degrees C. Not in one range, but it's possible to do that. And some examples I wanted to show you. Inline inspection. You see here we control the, the heat, but also the shape of the, the bottle just after, after production. The same here, but from the top. A uh, very important market for the future is not yet there. It's a predictive maintenance uh, in a um, um, power box. Now the people are using uh, just uh, contact sensors or, uh, or uh, yes, uh, one point sensor. In the future, the people want to use this kind of sensor in order to have a complete view of the, of the power supply and to detect in it directly where is the problem and to have a remote sensing, in fact, on the power, or power uh, supply. Another point here is the same kind of things. It's uh, also a power supply, and uh, this one is overheated. Uh, same kind of things also. Uh, of course, very important market. It is the electronic components. You can do failure analysis with that. For example, here you have some bad boards with uh, some odd points that should not be there. A, a correct board should be like that. So you see the difference between the two. OK, that's uh, what I wanted to present to you. In conclusion, so Xenix brought a new line of uh, infrared cameras going from short wave, mid wave, and long wave. They are compact, easy to, un to, uh, to, inst to install, flexible also with our, uh, let's say, partners like uh, uh, MVTech or CVB for the, for the HTML, CVB for the software. Uh, flexible for the interface, and modular. So that means this is something really that you, you can integrate easily and uh, uh, use in your future development. And finally, yes, we are using industrial components. So I would like to invite you to visit us on our booth. Uh, we have there, if you look at that, the, the whole range of uh, cameras with uh, all the possibilities in terms of detectors, including future detectors. Um, and you are welcome, so thank you very much. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask me after the, these presentations. So thank you very much.